morning, dear church. Welcome to BBC at Sunday service. Let us read from the Word of God and start our service today. And Psalm 47 says, Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shield of the earth belongs to God. He is highly exalted. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace that has brought us here today. We thank you for the privilege you give, give us to enter your house. We thank you that we can all come together and sing praises to you, bring our petitions before you, and call you our Abba Father. And we can hear from your word and have fellowship with one another. Father, how awesome are your deeds for us. So Lord, we enter the gates of your house with thanksgiving in our hearts. We bring our songs of praise and adoration before you. May your name be glorified. May the word preached today shine in our hearts which are filled with the darkness of this world. And may everything we do, do in fear of you and to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, dear church, let us join our worship team to praise and worship our Lord. Family, shall we all rise and worship together? Build 
Reminded us, Lord, to seek your face. And Father, here we are. Call us away from the cares of this world, Lord, in this hour. As we come to your feet, we want to be fully immersed in your presence, Lord. And hear your word, Father, and apply it to our hearts and to our lives, Lord. Come fill us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Roshan and team, for leading us in praising God. Dear family, having sung to our Lord, let us all unite our hearts as I lead us to give thanks to the Lord for the past days. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your steadfast love for us. Help us to love you with all our being. When we thank you, so many wonderful thoughts come to our minds, uh, bringing us immense joy and happiness, filling every moment with a refreshing delight. We praise you, Father, for creating our soul, for making it beautiful and holy, even though we live in a difficult and hostile world, for giving us a body and maintaining our strength, for your generous provision, ensuring our daily sustenance, for the happiness of being with family and friends, and for the capacity to help others. We also thank you, Father, for a heart that can empathize with sorrows and needs and for a mind that can show compassion to others. We love you beyond what words can express and for the role you pray in creating and nurturing all of us. Father, make 
our love grow, O oh Lord our God, as time goes on and for all eternity. Master, we give you thanks for the immediate meal prayers, for the ladies' prayer meeting, for the men's prayer meeting, and then also, Father, we thank you for the prime timers visit that took place during this week. And we give you thanks, Father, for bringing us together in this ministries. We, Father, also want to give you thanks for the successful marriage wedding of Raul and Michelle on the 8th of January. And Father, we want to give you thanks for uh, Jeresh and Rachel Kumar on the 8th January and on 9th January for Manasseh, uh, Luca Lord, and today as Caroline Pao celebrates her birthday. We give you thanks for giving them another year of life and, and for you being able to give them life to live it, Lord Jesus. And we also want to give you thanks, Father, for uh, those that are celebrating their anniversaries, Lord, and we want to pray for Dr. Hentok and Hongla on 8th January. And we also thank you, Father, for Paudin Gomboy and Manailu on uh, 10th January, Lord Jesus. And today, uh, Aaron and Dr. Chinglu, as they celebrate their anniversary, we thank you, Father, for giving them one more year of uh, being a couple, Lord, and we ask that you would help them, Lord. We also want to give you thanks, Father, for the Vita and the children's talk that we will see after this. And we thank you, Father, for listening and answering our prayers in your time and in your way, Lord. And we adore you and we ask all this in your name. Amen. Good morning, Church. My name is Manohar Rajkumar. I am from Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. I thank God for this opportunity to share what He had done for me. My life without Jesus was very bad. Once I met with an accident, no one was with me. A car had hit me and I was unconscious for three days in ICU. I was not saved at that time. My mother prayed for me when I was unconscious. Lord, please give a chance to my son because he does not know you yet. God give me a chance. After seven days, I was discharged from the hospital. God give me a chance to live again, but I did not change. After class 10, I, be I became addicted. I made friendship with wicked people. Some of them were gangsters. Because of those friendships, I went to prison when I was 17 years old. Then I got admission in an engineering college. There I became addicted to drugs and smoking. I lost my weight in all this. When my parents got to know this, they took me to counseling centers and my mother prayed for many years for my salvation. After that, I quit my studies and I went to Bible college. There I heard the gospel. I repent of my sins before God and I was saved. And since then, the Lord is changing me and I give up all my addictions. I joined a ministry called Reach the Unreached. I went to many places with them. I share the good news with tribal people. I I am so thankful that God has changed me fully and changing me every day. Thank you. Good morning children. All around us, things and people are divided into categories. Some fall into one, like this is a fruit, that is a vegetable. I am a Malayali. I am also an Indian. And sometimes these overlap. I am an Indian from Kerala. But there is only one being in the category of holiness. In fact, he is the standard for what is holy. Who is that Fargan? God is holy and the standard of holiness. His name is Kiddush Israel. Kiddush Israel. Kiddush Israel means Holy One of Israel. This name is revealed to us when the Lord says to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. 
There is no other person like God. He's completely set apart. And what's more, God's holiness makes him hostile and even dangerous to our problem, which is sin. But incredibly, he calls people like us to come to him and be like him, holy. So how are sinful people to come to him, to be like him? In the Old Testament, God provided a way through the sacrificial system so his people could come into his presence. When they had offered a worthy sacrifice, they could come to God. Being with God made people holy. And when they were apart from him, they would desire to be holy once more since they would sense how the world made them unholy once more. The cycle of sacrifices and repentance was broken when the Holy One of Israel was pleased to accept Jesus' willing death on the cross as a substitute for his chosen people, as the eternal sacrifice. The door for God's children to be welcomed forever was opened. Isn't that wonderful? Are you holy? Did you know that when Jesus walked the earth and appeared to spiritual beings like demons, they recognized him? as the Holy One of God. When people met Jesus' disciples, they noticed how different they were since they had been with Jesus. You see, they were now clothed in Jesus' righteousness. Would people who meet you and me sense the same thing about you and me? Let's pray. Thank you, Holy One of Israel. You call us to be holy. You equip us to be holy. But for us to be like you, we must be your children and we must spend as much time as possible with you. Father, I pray that we will desire this in our lives. We would seek holiness. We would seek your face. We would seek to serve your people. We would seek to spend time in your temple with your people. And Lord, we would be ambassadors for you. I pray, Lord, that you will give us that gift. And I pray for everyone present that we will desire your holiness and call upon you for mercy in our lives in the name of the perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ. In your matchless Son's name we pray. Amen. Family, here in that part of our worship this morning where we bring our confessions to the Lord, shall we all pray? I will pause and that will be the indication for you to bring your confessions to the Lord. We are a people who cannot wash ourselves or make ourselves clean. Even as your children, we love evil and resist what you have said is good. We demand justice of ourselves but fail to pursue it vigorously on behalf of others. We are indignant about the oppression we read of in faraway lands yet blind to the oppression taking place right here before our eyes in our families, homes and workplaces. We feel good when we give money to feed orphans, but we often don't know or care about the widows and orphans who need your love right around us. Father, forgive us. Redeeming God, we praise you that you have washed us clean in the blood of your Son. You placed all our evil on him so that it could be removed from your sight forever. Jesus suffered profound injustice for our lukewarm apathy and was fatally oppressed for our continuing failure to love and help uh, the oppressed. He became fatherless to pay for our careless disregard for the fatherless and widow in our towns. We crucified your precious son and instead of hating us, you have given us his perfect goodness and welcomed us into your family. We are left undone by your extravagant love and complete salvation. We ask you to wash our minds and hearts clean, moment by moment. Make our hearts good so that works of kindness and mercy flow from us to the needy people you have placed in our lives. May we love them as you have loved us in our great need. Cause us to love justice and like your son to suffer joyfully great injustice on behalf of others. Help us to love extravagantly as we have been loved by you.
In Jesus' name, amen. Family, receive these words of assurance. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Family, let us continue to bring the needs of the church at this time before the Lord. Father, thank you that we have come before you in faith, in forgiveness, and hearts are reconciled to you again. Lord, we pray very specially the needs that are before us. We thank you that uh, we come in the assurance of prayers heard and answered. And thank you that we come with a testimony and with a history of so many prayers, Lord, which you have heard and you have answered. You have intervened in our lives time and time again. And we are just so grateful to you. And with that faith, Lord, we bring the big things and the small things before your throne of grace and before your mercy seat. Lord, our hearts are drawn very specially to the Prasad family, Stephen family at this time, Lord. Very specially, Lord, we ask for your consolation on Timothy, Lord, in the loss of Sapna, Lord, who is with you now. Thank you, Lord, for Sapna's testimony and her journey, Lord, that even in those very frightful places and in those places uh, where others could have lost faith, Lord, she held on to faith and she witnessed to the faith in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and we pray that you would strengthen our faith through testimonies like this. Lord, we want to bring before you the places where there is unrest, Lord, in our country and abroad. And, know, and we know, Lord, uh, that um, because of human agendas, many a times we make life miserable for each other. Lord, we pray that you would give wisdom to our leaders and uh, to administer justice uh, in such a way so that your people will live in peace, Lord. Very specially, we remember those churches that have been uh, burnt in violence, Lord. And we pray that each one of them will be rebuilt, each one of those homes rebuilt where people have lost their homes. And Lord Jesus, where people have lost lives, we ask for your peace in that. Lord, we ask for your peace uh, in the land of the holy. And Lord Jesus, in also in, in Ukraine and in Russia. And Lord Jesus, in other parts of the world, uh, which we don't hear, Lord, and where there is violence, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would hear our prayers, Lord, and intervene. Lord, we pray because of the prayers of the saints, Lord, and because of the intervention of the Spirit of the Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that a billion soul would be saved worldwide, Lord. And through all of this, through the love of the Lord Jesus Christ that has been shown um, by your church, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that this may happen. Lord Jesus, we bring those before you, Lord, who are struggling with cancer. And Lord Jesus, we have this whole list before us of people who pray, whom we pray for specifically. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would uh, give them courage, give them peace, uh, give, them, uh, give them the perseverance to hold on tightly to your hand, Lord, uh, through, this, through these very varied and difficult circumstances uh, that they face. Lord Jesus, we very specially bring our elderly before you also in the church, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the ministry that is there to the prime timers. But we very specially pray for those, Lord, who provide love and care for them, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray uh, that they would know the blessing of the Lord, but the right care would be provided in the life of the elderly. And also, Lord, among those who are not saved would come to know you as their Lord and their Master. Very specially, Lord, those who administer uh, grace to them and help them, Lord, uh, Lord Jesus, that uh, uh, they would know rightly how to provide that, Lord. And all the challenges of aging, Lord, that comes along with that, Lord, we pray that you would, that they would know your peace uh, during uh, this time. Lord Jesus, we very specially uh, pray uh, for those who are 
who have been engaged to be married. We pray for Awong and Joyce, Mayank and Sakshi, Roshan and Catherine. Lord Jesus, we pray for their weddings of Awong and Joyce on 24th January, Mayank and Sakshi on 3rd of February, and Roshan and Catherine on 1st of March. All that these young couples and the families need, Lord, for these events and then for life together, Lord, they would know that uh, you are a loving, kind, gracious, providing Father. And Lord Jesus, that these homes would be built in love, built in faith, built on the solid foundation uh, that is Christ Jesus. We bring our expectant mothers, Rachel, Bhavna, and Muskan into your hands, Lord. And we pray that um, uh, they would... Uh, 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 they would uh, have smooth pregnancies and Lord Jesus, the arrival of the baby is safely into this world. Lord Jesus, we pray for the oncoming birthdays this week. We pray for Andreas, for Nima and for uh, Usha, uh, Shashi's mother. Lord, we pray that another year of grace has is added in their lives, Lord, that they would continue to value life and continue to serve you in a manner, Lord, that brings great glory to you. We pray for Pastor Honey and the Chandigarh Anugraha Ashram, Lord, and the ministries that are going on there. Lord Jesus, enable us to build uh, the center on the land that is now available to us. Lord, we pray for men's morning prayer every Wednesday um, at 6 a.m. that is on Zoom, that you would even encourage many other men, Lord, to come together and pray for their families, for their church, and for the nation. We pray for the Endurance Ministry and Aaron and Aching Liu's personal example and leadership of this ministry. Lord Jesus, again, we ask for your blessing upon them. Lord, we pray for the upcoming programs. We pray for the Junior Church Winter Carnival on the 28th of January, the Word Conference on 7th, 8th and 9th of February, the preaching seminars that take place the following week, Lord Jesus, marriage vows renewal on 11th of February and 14th of February, the Valentine's party. Lord Jesus, uh, we pray that through all of this, Lord, that the church would continue to be built and none would fall among the cracks, Lord, and everyone would know that they are loved for and taken care for. Lord Jesus, we want to bring our nation before you, very especially our president uh, and the governors of this land, Lord. We pray for the prime minister and his cabinet. We pray for the leaders uh, of the opposition and leaders who are in power. Lord Jesus, through this entire political process and the judicial structure and the administrative structures of this land, uh, that justice uh, and law uh, and uh, uh, provision would be given to every one of the citizens uh, of this lovely land, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray very specially for our soldiers, for our policemen, for those who guard our borders and vital installations, Lord. Many times at a great cost of family life and great cost to them themselves, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would, uh, you would so bless uh, uh, them and their families, Lord, and, and, and keep them protected. We give you thanks, Lord, for the opening of your word that takes place very faithfully in this pulpit, Lord. Lord. And every time the word of God is faithfully opened, Lord, thank you that your people hear the voice of God clearly heard. And we pray again that miracle of grace would take place today as your servant, Pastor Abon, opens the word, Lord. We pray that the word would reach our hearts and the spirit will do a surgery in our spirits, in our souls uh, and in our lives. And the outcome of it will be visible even during the week. Lord Jesus, we, we, we ask you, Father, to look down upon us in your tender love and show forth towards us and those who pray with us your rich mercies and compassion. For we ask all of this in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Church, can I encourage you to kindly be upstanding in your places as we again make a confession uh, of our faith. And uh, we are going to be uh, confessing through the Athenian Creed, uh, the second part. Uh, and uh, uh, we again uh, begin, as you notice, by asking you as to what we believe about the Christian faith. And I will ask that, and in response, we will read the Athenian Creed part two, uh, that will be uh, on the on the screens uh, for you. Church, 
let us confess what we believe about the Christian faith. Whoever desires to be saved should above all hold to the universal Christian faith. Anyone who does not keep the whole and unbroken will doubtless perish eternally. Now this is the universal Christian faith, that we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the essence. The Father was neither made nor created nor begotten from anyone. The Son was neither made nor created. He was begotten from the Father alone. The Holy Spirit was neither made nor created uh, nor begotten. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. Accordingly, there is one Father, not three fathers. There is one Son, not three sons. There is one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. None in this Trinity is before or after. None is greater or smaller. In their entirety, the three persons are co-eternal and co-equal with each other. So in everything, as was said earlier, the unity in Trinity and the Trinity in unity is to be worshipped. Anyone then who desires should be, to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. Thank you, Church. You may kindly be seated. I have the pleasure to announce the marriage bands of Mayank and Sakshi. If you can rise, please, Mayank and Sakshi. Thank you. Please be seated. Mr. Mayank Rawal, a bachelor, member of Bible Bhavan Christian Fellowship, son of Mr. Pawan Rawal and Mrs. Neetu Rawal, a resident of 116 Antriksha Apartment, H Block, Vikaspuri, New Delhi, and Ms. Sakshi Bhatt Spinster, member of Bible Bowen Christian Fellowship, daughter of Mr. K.K. Bhatt and late Mrs. Kumud Bhatt, residents of 50 Amrita Shargil Mark, New Delhi, since 2017. Their marriage has been fixed on 3rd February 2024 at 12 p.m. at Bible Bowen Christian Fellowship, 50 Amrita Shargil Mark, New Delhi. If anyone knows of just and true cause or any impediment due to which this marriage should not be solemnized, then it should be brought to the notice of the pastors of Bible Bowen Christian Fellowship. This is the second call of this marriage bans, dated January 14th, 2024. Thank you. Children will now leave for their classes with the teachers and assistants. As we prepare to hear the sermon, um, the ushers kindly prepare to give out the Bibles to whoever needs it. Kindly raise your hand so that they can see you. Do take this time to look into, check your mobiles as well to either keep it switched off or silent mode. Also, once again, um, if you need to step out, use the back door and not the front doors. Shall we rise for the pupitium?
As we remain standing, we will turn to Joshua chapter 9, the book of Joshua chapter 9. If you are using our church Bible, you'll find that in page 84. We will read the first 21 verses. As soon as all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in hill country and in the lowland all along the coast of great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites heard of this, they gathered together as one to fight against Joshua and Israel. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they, on their part, acted with cunning and went and made ready provisions and took worn-out sacks for their donkeys and wineskins, worn-out and torn and mended, with worn-out patched sandals on their feet and worn-out cloths. And all their provisions were dry and crumbly. And they went to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a distant country, so now make a covenant with us. But the men of Israel said to, to the Hevites, Perhaps you live among us, and how can we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? They said to him, From a very distant country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard a report of him that all and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Hashbon, and to Og king of Bashan, who lived in Astaroth. So our elders and all, in, all the inhabitants of our country said to us, Take provisions in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants." Come now, make a covenant with us. Here is our bread. It was still warm when we took it from our houses as our food for the journey on the day we set out to come to you. But now, behold, it is dry and crumbly. These wineskins were new when we filled them. And behold, they have burst. And all these garments and sandals of ours are worn out from the very long journey. So the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask counsel from the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them, made a covenant with them, 
to let them live, and the leaders of the co congregations swore to them. At the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. And the people of Israel set out and reached their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Kephirah, Beeroth, and Kiriath Jerem. But the people of Israel did not attack them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Then all the congregation murmured against the leaders. But all the leaders said to, the, to all the congregations, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we may not touch them. This we will do them. Do to them, let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because, the, because of the oath that we swore to them. And the leaders said to them, Let them live. So they become cutters of wood and drawers of water for all the congregation, just as the leaders had said to them, said of them. This is God's word. Praise be to him. You may be seated, please. Let us now ask the Lord in a short prayer to help us. Father, we seek your help even as we make an attempt to study your word. So please guide us so that we may understand, treasure it, and live according to it in obedience, bringing glory to the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we ask. Amen. As our practice here in this church, we devote one of the first two sermons on prayer. So let us consider the title, When the Church Prays. When the Church Prays. We are not thinking about the past or future. We are thinking of the ongoing vital function of the body of Christ. It is not a program. It is not a series of events. It is, as it were, the breeding that sustains life. And secondly, we are focusing on corporate prayer. Today's principles, no doubt, can help our private and personal prayers. However, my intention is to dwell on public prayer as a local church. So let us begin by considering what, what it looks like um, when the church does not pray. That's our first point, when the church does not pray, uh, you know the uneasy feeling you get when you know something bad is about to happen. As we read the Bible from Genesis onward, the book of Joshua is the portion we want to reach soon. You know what I mean, to be honest, reading through Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Do uh, the Deuteronomy is like crossing an evening uh, traffic at Chandni Chok. And so here we come to Joshua, and it is, uh, we, we get a bit of a relief because it's full of action and uh, we can flow through. Uh, by the way, uh, our reading of the Bible uh, last week, the, the, the community reading together uh, till last Sunday was 30. I'm very encouraged that this morning I found 45 of us have signed up. Even uh, Dexter, who uh, watches us online, sent a request to send him the link. So he sent, uh, I sent him the link. This morning, one more attempt has been made. You'll find in our prayer link, uh, prayer of WhatsApp, the link. And we have exactly 353 days, uh, if we count today, that if you start today, you will finish reading by 31st of December. And so I encourage you to make that attempt. So here is Joshua and the, and the Israelites enjoying the bounty, having entered the promised land. Uh, if it is a, a movie, the setting is of a bustling life, children playing in open space, uh, grown-ups are working, donkeys are lo loaded, Cattle are led to the fields, women are drawing water from the well, city planners, uh, real estate dealers and homemakers are busy in the town center. And then as we come to chapter 9, the music changes because we discover the remaining kingdoms are planning an attack. Verse 2, they gather together as one to fight against Joshua and Israel. 
the, the, the scene changes further as the camera picks on a bunch of tricky people approaching in verse 3. When the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they on their part acted with cunning and went and made ready provisions and took worn out sacks for their donkeys and wineskins worn out and torn and mended. Verse 4, we go back there. They on their part acted with cunning. And that's really when the music drops to a strange tune and make our eyebrows rise. We, we just read the passage, so we already know who they are, but Joshua and his band don't know, and we know how, is, how this is going to end. Fast forward it to verse 14, we discover, so the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask counsel from the Lord. They did not ask counsel from the Lord. I take this as the key verse of the passage. They did not ask counsel from the Lord. They ended up signing a treaty with the wrong people. And that's the uneasiness we get as we go through the narrative. Why didn't they consult the Lord? Why didn't they pray? Prayer was intense before the big battle. Prayer is forgotten after the victory. As they faced the giant walls of Jericho, remember how diligent they were in following the instructions of God, march around the city for seven days. On the seventh day, march around it seven times, not just once like the previous six days. They obeyed, and so the city was overthrown. Well done. We wish they remained diligent in listening to God's instructions in all they do, Sadly, and too soon, we encountered the failure of people. They went up to attack Ai with just 3,000 soldiers, but they were defeated, losing about 36 men. Why? Because one man named Akan kept some precious items for himself from the spoil of Jericho. And how is that described in Joshua 7? If we go back a little bit. But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. For Akan, the son of Carmi, son of Jabdi, son of Jera, the, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. It was one man who sent that too from the tribe of Judah, of all the people, and the anger was against the whole nation. Not only that, they didn't pray before the battle, they also found out the sin of a man brought trouble to them all. Comfort, confidence in experience and human strength, dwelling in past glory, these are the tendencies of man. That is why the prayer of Agur in Proverbs 30 is very helpful. Verse 8, Proverbs 30, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Give me neither poverty nor riches. How sober is that? Coming back to the deceptions of the Gibeonites, the matter did not end during Joshua's time. Many decades later, as soon as David became the king, we are told of an event concerning the same people, and this is in 2 Samuel 21, uh, let me read a part of it. You can read the, the whole story later on. In verse 1, Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David sought the face of the Lord, and the Lord said, There is blood guilt on Saul and on his household, 
on his house because he put the Gibeonites to death. So we know King Saul is notorious for impatience and carelessness. He was impatient in the way he offered unauthorized sacrifice because he could not wait for the arrival of Samuel. He did not destroy the Amalekites completely despite the clear instructions given to him to annihilate them. Impatient, careless, he was careless in making his army staff on the day of celebration. He was careless in the way he consulted a medium. However, there was one positive side of him, one positive side of King Saul. We are told he had a zeal for the people of Israel. But this impressive energy was spent in a wrong way. Reading further down, we discover why there was a three-year famine in Israel. We are told, verse 2, So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the people of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. Although the people of Israel had sworn to spare them, Saul had sought to strike them down in his zeal for the people of Israel and Judah. In his zeal for the people of Israel and Judah. So, the carelessness of Saul resurfaced again. Zeal in itself is good, but when it is utilized without knowledge, the consequence is disastrous. Three years of famine, that's not a small trouble. First year, that's bad enough. Second year, hey, what's up? Third year, people are in real trouble. So David sought God and found out why this was so. As usual, children are asking their parents, Why famine? Because Saul came to Gibeonites. Who, who are they? Why killing them brought such a big trouble for us? Why this? Why that? Simple answer. Joshua and the leaders did not pray when the Gibeonites came to deceive them. Secondly, Saul did not bother to take up history. An individual, a Khan sent, the whole nation suffered. Joshua and the leaders didn't pray, and Saul was careless, the whole nation suffered. What emerges as we consider these accounts is the impact of prayerlessness on the community, on the whole community. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The enemy continues to operate against God's people today. Sadly, the church continues to fail the reason such accounts as in Joshua 9 and 2 Samuel are written is for them to know that they do fail. They must have thought about themselves in the light of it and must have seen their own failure saying, we are no better. Secondly, they are also driven to ask, who will do it perfectly? Their heroes failed and they failed. And then... Our intention today is not to think about our own failure and feel sorry about the whole bunch of God's people across the, the ages. Instead, we are to ask, who did it perfectly? This leads us to our second point, when Jesus prays. Let us begin with what the writer of Hebrews has to say about Jesus. Hebrews 5, 7, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Let us also hear from his own mouth in John chapter 5, verse 19. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord 
but only what he say, what he sees the father doing, or whatever the father does, that the son does likewise. Unlike a Khan, a descendant of Judah, Jesus, the Lion of Judah, did not steal what belongs to the Lord. Instead, he restores what is stolen. Unlike Joshua, the great leader, Jesus did not skip prayer even after victories. He ministered to thousands till sundown, yet the next day he was found praying very early in the morning. Jack Formum calculated what very early morning of Mark chapter 1 would be. If morning is 6 a.m., early morning is 5 a.m., very early morning would be 4. That's what Jesus did. The previous day was a super heavy day, and yet he was able to wake up. He did wake up very early morning to pray. Another time, the Lord and his disciples were really busy. They could not find time even to sit down and eat. So the team set out for a re retreat on a mountainside. And we know the story. The Lord was spotted and thousands came after them. And he fed 5,000 men. It was getting late. The crowd left and the Lord sent his disciples ahead of him in a boat we thought he wanted to rest. Instead, we are told he went up to the mountain to pray. David, King David, is the foreshadow of Christ. Unlike Saul, he is a man who always sought the face of God. Saul, instead of seeking God, slaughtered the priest at one time. Instead of taking counsel from God, he consulted a medium Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of David, is the one who does it perfect. Always in tune with his Father, true prayers. This is the ultimate hero. He taught his disciples to pray. He modeled prayer. And he expects the church to pray. He taught his disciples to pray. There is room for Prayer in the closet as individuals, and there is also room for corporate prayer. He does not overemphasize on one, and we don't, uh, and he does not neglect any of the two. When we, and when he was giving his sermon on the mount, he addressed individual issues. But when it comes to teach what we to teach what we call the Lord's prayer. Uh, you would notice he changed it to the corporate application. Our Father, right? And then we go down, it says, Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive against us. Lead us, deliver us. So the implication is very clear. This teaching is to be used when the church gathers to pray. We must also remember that Jesus expects his disciples to pray. He always starts by saying, when you pray or when you fast. He didn't say, if you want to pray or if you are talented to pray. It goes without saying that we don't need to spend the whole time saying that prayer is the indication of an ongoing relationship between God and his people. There is room for praying in secret for as long as you want to. But when you pray in public, don't rely on many words. Pray sensibly. And when you pray, pray like this. That's when he, he taught the Lord's Prayer. Let us be honest that we know much about prayer and its necessity. What keeps us from doing what we know is actually because of laziness, pride, and fear. We are lazy, we are proud, and we are afraid of exposing ourselves when we share our prayer needs. 
Essentially, fear is a deceptive form of pride. Why should I share my struggle with others? I, 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 I can deal with it alone. Look at Jesus. When Jesus prays in public, we can see it as a model for us to follow. This is in Gethsemane. He took with him Peter, John, and James. And listen to how he shares his prayer need. My soul is very sorrowful. Even to death, remain here and watch with me. I appreciate those who send prayer requests for any event under the sky happening, traveling, exam, sickness, anything. Now, I don't do the same. Does it mean I don't need prayer supports? No, I need them. I need your prayer supports. But it is a combination of my laziness and my pride that stopped me from participating, encouraging, and strengthening uh, the church. Having said that, we do understand how fear plays its role in church life. Are you afraid that you may be asked to raise your hand if you are an introvert here? Afraid that you would be asked to talk to your neighbor, asked to pray with your neighbor, asked if you have read the Bible cover to cover, asked how many times, how many minutes you pray in a day. Who wants to be asked those questions? Only those who want to show off, right? By nature, we don't like to expose our failures. We fear failures if we sign up for certain activities. However, if fear is, is fear an excuse? I think of it like this. Would I prefer to remain the same way just because I fear failure? It's not an excuse. Fear is not from God. The more we look at Jesus, the more we can let go of it. Do you fear that you are not worthy a person to be praying? Do you feel small? Well, Jesus empowers us. Ask in my name. Use my name. That's what he is saying. You know how that works? A powerful man tells you to say to the gatekeeper, tell him that I asked you to come. So the gatekeeper verifies with the big man, and then you are allowed to go and see. So in the same way, we can say to God, your son, the Lord Jesus, told me to come and ask. So in the sight of God, we know, we are told we look like Jesus because our sins are washed by his blood and we are clothed with his righteousness. Are you afraid of becoming vulnerable? The Lord Jesus showed us the way. Jesus did not stop to consider, what will my disciples think when I share my struggle with them? I am their leader. I am their savior. I am the son of God. My soul is very sorrowful, he said. Have you ever shared something like that in a prayer meeting? The gist of our second point is to say that Jesus filled the gap of our failures. The best thing in the midst of, the, of all this is to take comfort in what the Lord Jesus has accomplished for us. Yet, instead of making us irresponsible in regard to prayer, we are given the reason why the church can pray despite our continued failures. This we will see in our third and final point. This is why the church prays. We can say our second point overlaps into our third point because it is the work of Jesus that makes it possible for the church to pray. Let's look at it. When the church fails, Jesus comes to the rescue. Jesus is, called, is also called our advocate. Uh, the apostle John wrote about that. An advocate stands in between the accused and the judge. The role is similar to that of the priest, the one 
who intercedes on behalf of the guilty. Therefore, in Hebrews 7, Jesus is presented as the priest of the highest order. And so, like our own experience here in our daily life, like our office here at Bible Bhavan, uh, we always consulted a lawyer whenever we have something to do with a legal matter. Our advocate helps us to say the right word. Otherwise, our own words can work against us later on. And likewise, our prayer must be, could be very shoddy in the ears of our Heavenly Father. And thankfully, in Hebrews 7.25, consequently, He, or the Lord Jesus, He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. So He is interceding for His people even now. We say a wrong prayer, Jesus corrects it, and says the right one to Jesus to the, to the Lord. The Holy Spirit who dwells in us intercedes for us when we don't know what to utter. So this should encourage us to pray, be it in private or in public. And secondly, just because Jesus fulfilled where we failed does not mean we can relax. Also, just because he intercedes for us even now does not mean we can skip prayer. We are expected to pray because Jesus says, when you pray, he didn't say, if you want to pray. That is why we titled our sermon, When the Church Prays. To be a church is to be praying, as to be alive is to be breathing. Breathing is not an option as we live. He expects us to pray. He knows where we tend to fail. He knows how it will work. Most married people will not say our marriage is perfect. Most parents will not say our parenting is perfect. Most children will not say our relationship with our parents and siblings are perfect. It goes without saying, like any other relationships, our prayer life be it individual, family, or church, is not perfect. This is where the grace of God comes wonderfully to our aid. As we are saved by grace, we continue to live under His grace. Most Christian leaders regret they didn't pray enough in their younger days of ministry. I don't think there will be one who can say, I did so well. And to be fair, they were remarkable praying persons. They also become authors of books on prayer that helpfully um, influence millions of believers. We are thankful for them, but they are very few. We believe God calls certain people to be extraordinary prayer warriors. You could be one. Generally speaking, we need some structure to make us pray corporately. One is the gathering on a Sunday morning. Maybe the only time you open the Bible is on a Sunday morning. You don't bring one, you are given one. Well, this is not to shame anyone. Yet you and I believe we all should read God's word, right? So this morning, our personal confession during the Apostle prayer, maybe the only time you prayed since last Sunday, and yet you believe and agree that we must pray. Now how did it end up reading the Bible and praying this week? It is because you came to church. On your own, or dragged by your parents or siblings on this cold morning, Sunday morning, but you are here. You prayed, and you read the Bible. This is not man's idea. This is God's idea. Are we doing well in public prayer? We are doing our best to help all of us to do well in it. Imagine you go skydiving, 
and your parachute fails to open, what will be the first thing that they will wish for? A huge net spread out to catch you, right? So BBCF has several nets spread to catch you for corporate prayers. Daily kneel, Monday to Saturday, from 1.15 to 1.30, just 15 minutes. Sounds easy. Well, some are caught there. Tuesday morning for ladies, Wednesday morning for men. Some men are caught there. I understand the ladies do much better, as always is the case. Okay, you are not a morning person, and you are busy in the afternoon. So we have second Friday evening, prayer summit. And let us be fair, good number do show up. Apart from this, we have seasons of fasting and prayer for 40 days, so 12 hours chain prayer. And finally, if all these nets somehow did not catch you, we have Sunday morning prayer before service, during the service, and after the service. And if you still stop coming to church even on Sunday, we may spread another net known as BBCF Call Center Prayer. You are driving, shopping, cooking, or sleeping, somebody will call you up to pray with you one-on-one -on -one over the phone. Well, that would happen. Somebody pursued me to be in his prayer group. I thought about it. Well, I have prayer time at home, BBCF and DBI, and to add a fourth dimension is no longer practical for me. I kept delaying my response, and then he eventually gave up. Good man. May the Lord bless that brother. I hope the other nine men he was pursuing were not like me. The solution is not in proliferation of prayer events and programs. Simply attempt spiritual skydiving every day to be caught in one of the the nets. And you may say, I'm not proud, I'm not lazy, but I don't like accountability. I understand it does not come easy, but we can find ways where we can find a space for such healthy practice of being in a church community. And to be specific, regardless of your lack of con experience, regardless of your personality, whether you're introvert, extrovert, uh, you can find ways to be involved in BBC of community prayer time. That's my exhortation. That's my challenge this morning. Furthermore, it is not because the pastors keep shouting from the front concerning this, but because we discover from the Bible this is what God has arranged and commanded his saints to be part of. Be members of a local church and be accountable to each other. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. You see, this is God's word. This, the church is God's idea. Gathering to pray to sing, to worship. Well, like we said, we are doing our best to make us pray when we gather, be it on Sunday or other days. And we should be working harder how to encourage everyone. You'll find some churches, they are more focused on how to welcome visitors or how to entertain the church members. And if you are an introvert, it is a nightmare when, you are, when the whole congregation are made to look at you for two minutes and sing welcome song. Well, we don't do that, but I know people do that. Instead, why don't we just spend some more time in prayer because that is what God wants us to do. So just like the early church in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, 442, we are to meet and do what a corporate body of Christ naturally does. We are told they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and 
the prayers. Teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and the prayers. That's what happened when the church gathered. I can pray with you because there is a structure arranged for me based on the command of God. I believe that there is nothing wrong to go outside of BBCF to pray. I believe that it is okay and go and learn from outside our church, but BBCF is where I have made myself accountable to. You and I pledge to attend regularly all meetings of BBCF when we sign up that membership form. It does not mean when you, you come, when you like to. It does not say when you find time. No, like it or not, we are expected to attend. We are to create time to be part of it. You are busy as anyone can be and as tired as anyone who live and work in this city can be. At Bible Bhavan, the team fast and pray first Friday every month. The wonderful thing about this is that my prayer request of one A4 size is prayed seven times that day. How? We divide ourselves into seven groups, praying in turns for one hour each from nine to four. So, my prayer point is prayed from 9 to 10, and then somebody comes, prayed again, 10 to 11, seven times over. After such a day of prayer, I go home with such joy and peace because he heard my prayer seven times, perfect number, by my team who are fasting and praying in the company of others who say amen to my prayer request. And Jesus perfects the obvious inadequacies in them. Peace is not absence of war or problems. Peace is calmness even in the midst of troubles. Peace that transcends understanding comes when every matter of life is committed to God. You set off the, for the day after praying, Remain at least in the attitude of prayer through the day and end the day with prayer. Then come what may, your soul, your life is secured in the loving arms of our Heavenly Father. You can rest on the pillow of God's sovereign power. Let me also tell you one more benefit of corporate prayer. On the day of Hindi and Nepali Christmas cantata, it was fun. The large team who had done the rehearsals all day were excited. I was given the responsibility to be in charge of the backstage, so I was there since afternoon. They were excited, they were shooting videos and photos, as they wait to perform. But one hour before the event, the lights were switched off, the gates were locked to prevent entry, and so the teams got together, formed circles, held, holding hands, and prayed. It was beautiful. If those obstacles were not there, the prayers that day may not have been as, in, as intense as it was that day. It was a marvelous testimony of what God does when as a community pray together. The church prays not because it is perfect. We have seen the, the consequence of prayerlessness of God's people is a lesson for God's people who live at any age. Jesus came, lived a perfect life including his prayer life and wonderfully prays for his church even today. The church prays despite the fact that we are, not, we are no different from anyone who lived in any environment in history. The church prays because God designed it wonderfully so that it is found praying without ceasing. 
May we joyfully be part of the praying church. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as, even as we bow in this little prayer again, we are comforted by the fact that our Lord Jesus sits at the right hand and intercedes on our behalf. Please, on our behalf, even for our own shortcomings. Perfects our prayers, poor prayers, into rich prayers. And so, Lord, we, we find ourselves strengthened and encouraged even when we know that we are not doing well in this prayer life. We commit ourselves, Lord, as we look to the rest of the year, and we are thankful that many programs and events are arranged so that we can sign in and take part in one or many of them. And we pray, help us even on the Lord's Day, how we may be in the attitude of prayer and be part of the prayer meetings at 9.15 to pray for the service, to be part of the prayer team and to be, to be joyfully, gladly taking part in the personal confessions of sins during the pastoral prayers. Lord, make us aware, deeply aware, that prayer is meant to be our natural response after having become your children, Lord. So thank you, Lord, for the wonderful ways that you have made in such a way that we are caught in one of the nets to be found praying together with your people. Help us even in our private prayer time, our prayer time with our spouses, with our family members, with our siblings and others that you have given to us to surround our life with. Help us to grow and be thankful as we mature in this life, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Abon. Family, the Word of God encourages us this morning to be vigilant in our prayer lives. So simple, right? Just talk to God. And that's it. That's what God requires of us. And I pray that the Lord would help us uh, or draw closer to him. Now at this point of time, we will bring our offerings and his tithes. Let's give thanks for the offerings and tithes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word through your servant this morning. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that we need to be vigilant in our prayer life. Thank you, Lord, that you have set the perfect example of praying life. And we pray that you would help us to follow your footsteps. And dear Lord, we also want to thank you for all your goodness in our lives. And we give you your tithes and offerings. We recognize your generosity in our lives, Lord, through this. You are a giving God. And Lord, we cannot, we can never outgive you. And you are a God who blesses. And our lives are blessed by you. Thank you, Father, for giving us financial blessings. We thank you for...
how you have been providing good jobs and businesses to everyone in this place. We thank you for the physical and mental strength that you provide so that we can all perform our best in our jobs, businesses, and ministries. Lord, we pray that you would bless these offerings and give wisdom to use it for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, amen. Shall we all rise for the closing song?
very warm welcome to everyone and thank you for worshipping with us this morning. Also those who are worshipping with us online, a very warm welcome to you. You will see on your screen the details of our ministries. And if you want more details, you can please visit our website, which is www.biblebhavan.org. Or you can contact us on our church admin number, which is 8860634892. You can also go to the front desk and Emmanuel and Monica will be there at the front desk today. Thank you. If you are worshipping with us for the very first time today, we request you to please raise your hand. And this is so that the ushering team can hand over the church brochure to you. This is our church brochure and this has details of various church ministries. Thank you once again for worshipping with us. Please note that the focus group will be meeting in the prayer room after the service today and we'll have the membership class in the conference room after the service. And the leadership meeting will take place at 12.30 in the conference room, 12.30. We also have uh, the daily bread book now available for 2024 in the book room. So please do have a look at it after the service. And what a beautiful song we were singing today. And it said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Dear family, we do have a prayer ministry available in our church. And if you are here with us this morning with a prayer need, please remain seated wherever you are. And our prayer team will come and pray with you and pray for you. Please also join us for fellowship after the service and we have simple fellowship meal available. There are sweets available as well and cakes from Sister Vinnie Parashar and family. They are grateful to the Lord for his blessings in 2023 and grateful to the church for prayers. Thank you. Also, if you have not picked up uh, your promise cards for 2024 as yet, Please do that today and they'll be available at the front desk. That's all for the announcements. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Shall we be upstanding for the benediction? Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The service has come to an end. Um, I just wanted to update you on, on something. Yesterday night was different and, and special in many ways for some of us from DBI and the church. Uh, many of you would know Pastor Stephen, who is the pastor in the Hindi church, and you would also know, possibly some of you would know his eldest son, Timothy. Uh, Timothy's wife, Sapna Jaiswal, had the first lung transplant done in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, that was in May 2022. And uh, on the 12th, that was day before yesterday, she was called home. And uh, last night, the funeral service was organized. Uh, and 8 o'clock, we were supposed to meet at the Ames Mortuary, uh, which got delayed because uh, some of the relatives were coming from outside of Delhi. Finally, 9.20 was the time given, and, but finally at 10 o'clock we met outside uh, the mortuary in the open. From 10 o'clock till 11.40 we had the service there. And what a beautiful service, I would say. There were people from the institute, from the church here. There were doctors and nurses. 
from the hospital right from the day then that she was admitted in the pulmonary ward and then uh, the, the department which took care of the surgery, uh, the doctors and nurses were there and, and there were others also, Christians and non-Christians alike. And I would say what a testimony it was to hear about her faith. The family uh, has decided, uh, uh, let, let me go back one and a half years back when the surgery took place. Uh, so Sapna was received lungs uh, uh, from, uh, it, it, you know, you know the organ like you, you donate uh, the organs. So somebody had donated after the, some accident victim, I believe. Uh, and, and it was Sapna's and Timothy's uh, decision that they will donate the body. So it is not going to be a funeral. They have decided to donate the body for further research and, and study uh, at the hospital. Uh, so there is not going to be any funeral. And whenever, whenever uh, at, a, at a later date, the research or the study is over, that's what Timothy mentioned at the end, uh, that they will cremate the body and they will bury the ashes at that point of time. But today at four o'clock, they have uh, kept the Thanksgiving and, uh, and the memorial service, uh, four o'clock at Evangelical Church of India. This is in uh, Palam Colony. Uh, so I would request all those who know the family, uh, especially if you can be there to, to encourage, to support and stand with them. And uh, the rest of us can definitely pray for the family, uh, for uh, Sapna's family, do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for them as well. Uh, and, and pray for Pastor Stephen and the other, other siblings as well. <clears throat> I would uh, like to um, ask the visitors to uh, the visit, vis uh, guest welcome team, uh, Brother LP and, and uh, Sister Sangmai and uh, Brother Solomon Christie to just come forward and, and the new visitors who are there, we would like to honor you. If you can just be, uh, can go with them to the, to the welcome area and receive, also receive a welcome pack from the, from the church. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. The service has come to an end, thank you.